right, John, let's dive into the Shelby Harris visit with the Browns yesterday that um, former Seattle Seahawk, he played for the Denver Broncos as well, and um, I guess the Raiders the first couple of years of his career. But let's just kind of talk about Shelby Harris and what, you know, what do you think he could bring to the Browns if we were to sign him? Uh, well, he can bring depth. I I do think he'd be a rotational piece, you know, and uh, not necessarily a sack machine, but he is you know, fairly present. It seems he's, he's going to get into the passer when he gets time. And this is just kind of a defense where any key valuable role player like that can just thrive more than they've ever been able to. Um, I mean, he's been on, you know, Seahawks, Broncos, 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 Broncos for the last six years. So he knows good defenses. Um, but just, you know, we've got so many guys. And I, I mean, it's almost like I think they're going to be stealing highlights from each other almost in a sense. But the more depth you can get, the better. So yeah, I'm, I, we're bringing him on for a fair price. And I don't think he would command some crazy salary, honestly. I don't. I don't think so either. I mean, he's six foot three, three hundred pounds. He's about to turn thirty-two years old. Um, so you don't think Shelby Harris would be like the starting defensive tackle two next to Tomlinson? You think he'd just be more of a rotational guy? I think we're going to rotate guys in no matter what. Really, no matter yeah, yeah. Okay, I, that, I I agree with that. I'm just thinking as a solidified starter next to Tomlinson. I think he's your guy. I no, think I, that, I would agree with that. And then I think you rotate, you know, depth pieces in on. For both spots, of course, no one's playing the entire game no. in every sna- every snap. But uh, I did I did have some stats here. I actually did an article for Dog Pound Daily, man, maybe like a month or so, maybe five or six weeks even, and uh, talking about defensive tackles. The Browns could still look out. Shelby, Shelby Harris was my top guy. Um, let's see, he uh, racked in eight seasons. He's gotten twenty four and a half sacks, two hundred sixty one tackles. He is very, he's good at generating pressures, but he excels at stopping the run. His run defense grade for PFF is a 72 over his career. And last season in 22 was his sole season with the Seahawks. And he had a 76.9 run defense grade, which was ninth best overall in the NFL, the, the defensive tackle position. And um, let's see, he came over to Seattle as part of the Russell Wilson trade and last, or at the end of, the 22 season, he was a cap casualty. So that's why he is available. Yep. And I was looking through the stats real quick. I didn't want to sound like an idiot, but um, stopping the run. Yeah, exactly. That's what I, I thought uh, stopping the run was kind of his thing. Um, that's just another area. Like, I know we've made moves, but do you remember last year? Because I try really hard not to. I, yeah. It's like repressed memories. I mean, people talk about. Oh, how we got gashed by this team or that running back or you know the practice squad guy. And it's like, oh man, I was trying really hard to forget that. It was in Atlanta. Yeah, and I was watching that on my breaks at work, and I was watching the game, thinking I'd rather be working. I'd rather <laughs> go back into that factory with and leave my phone in my car and just work for twelve hours because that just seems so much more pleasant than watching a Joe Woods defense. Yeah, so. You know, and that's a big thing. I don't even think we've, we've talked about it. I don't think, I think we overlook how important it is that we have a new defensive coordinator. We, everyone wants to talk about the guys that we're picking up that are going to be on the field. But like, even like the defensive personnel as it is right now with the, with uh, with Jim Schwartz, I think it's going to be fun to watch. And man, if we can add anybody solid, anybody that would bump one of our current, you know, tentative starters out um we're just going to be that much better yeah and yeah harris is a guy i'm, I'm interested in for sure yeah i'm i'm 100 on board with signing him if the price is right of course i mean it's got to fit what andrew berry wants to do financially but as far as bidding the team and the scheme and the defense and what we want to do i mean he's perfect he's he helps solidify that run defense like you said and it's just after last year and honestly the last you know few seasons we've had I feel like stopping the run cannot be emphasized nearly enough. So as of this recording, no news yet on Shelby Harris. We don't know. We we know he came in for a visit. We're not sure how that situation is going to resolve, but we'll be here to let you know and, and give our takes on it when it does. 
Yep, and it looked like his contract with the Broncos was for nine million a year. Okay, uh, I don't think he's, I don't think he's going to see another contract quite that big, you know, given his age. So, no, I agree with you. So I, I think that you know, Andrew, Andrew Bear just has a knack of getting these kinds of things done. So, yep. you know, if if he leaves and and we don't end up signing in, I, then I trust AB. I'm sure there was a good reason for it, but yeah, and I, I, we brought like, it. So this isn't just Brown's fan speculation. Like we we brought him in for a visit, so obviously someone's interested in him. So if he's Barry's guy, Barry's going to make it happen. Yeah, yep. Long as as long as Shelby Harris wants to play in Cleveland. Yeah, and I mean, I know Cleveland still is the butt of a lot of jokes, but you look at this defense and the players that you know, a guy like Shelby Harris would come in and play next to with Jim Schwartz as your defensive coordinator, it's pretty enticing. It's pretty enticing. I agree. Thanks for listening to another episode of The Dogs Podcast. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube and follow us on Twitter at The Dogs Podcast. Get your thoughts on the show at thedogspodcast.com.